So a lot of you have been enjoying my jewelry tutorials for Blender 4.0. So I decided today to do a stud earring tutorial. We're gonna be making um, a set of stud earrings. As you can see here in a very simple, just very simple kind of clasp design here with a simple jewel, but I think it's gonna look quite good. It's really, um, I'd say beginner friendly if you wanna give it a shot and make this. We're gonna model, add some materials, a bit of lighting and render out a final result. And as always, my final blend file will be on my Patreon, which you can check out in the description. That also helps support the channel. So let's jump in. So obviously the centerpiece of an earring is gonna be the diamond or the jewel. So Blender already comes with an add-on that's gonna help us out here. So if you go to edit, you go over to preferences, you can then go to your add-ons and you can just come over here in the search bar and type in extra. And then you're gonna see add mesh extra objects. Just click on that. Then go over here and just save your preferences. And then inside of object mode here, just select all your default objects and press delete. And then we're gonna go shift A. And now under your mesh options, because we enabled those extra objects, you can go down all the way here and you're gonna see diamonds, right? And by the way, it's added in some other things um, over here like beam builder, wall factory, but We'll talk about those in another tutorial. So you're gonna to go to diamonds and you're gonna type, uh, just click here on brilliant diamond. And we're gonna leave it as it is over here. And by the way, you can come here to the custom settings here for the brilliant diamond, change a lot of the parameters, but we're gonna go with the default. So now let's go into our front orthographic view. Let's go shift A under our mesh options. Let's add in a circle. Let's go into edit mode. And with this circle, let's also enable our vertex select option. And with everything active, we're gonna go S, and we're gonna scale it a little bit, yeah, like so. And let's go to our front view, and let's go E to extrude and Z, and extrude it down a little bit. S to scale slightly, and then E to extrude and Z. Let's extrude it down. Let's go to about here, S to scale, about this much, just wrapping around the outside of the diamond. And let's go E to extrude, Z, S to scale, and let's come to about here, just the bottom of the diamond. Then we're gonna go E to extrude, S to scale, and we're gonna scale that in quite small. And then G, Z, move it down a bit. And then go Shift, Alt, and left click on this edge to select the loop. And then go Control B or Command B to create a bevel. Roll the middle mouse button once, and now I've got a little rounded area. Now let's come up here, Shift and Alt, left click on this edge over here. And let's go E to extrude, S to scale a little bit. Maybe let's just lift it slightly, something like that. And now in your front orthographic view, you can go E to extrude and Z. I've just gone into wireframe mode so I can see it better. So just extruding in, E to extrude and Z, scale it. E to extrude and let's just go like so, down to here. Doesn't have to be perfect and um, yeah, something like that's good. So I've just hidden the gem there by selecting it and pressing H. But what we're gonna do is select this um, holder that we've made. We're gonna go to our modifiers, add modifier, and let's click on search and type in sub, and let's get a subdivision surface modifier. There we go. Now we're gonna right click and go shade smooth if that's selected. Okay, so we have that bit done. Now let's go shift A. Let's add in a cylinder. Let's go G, Z and move this down. And let's go S to scale that guy down. I'm gonna go about this much. So we're gonna tab into edit mode and let's just select this bottom face and go G, Z, and let's bring it down to about here. And then we're gonna go E to extrude and Z, go down a little bit and then S to scale it down, really small to make a fine point. And then let's come over here, control R, left click once and let's slide in an edge. Let's come over here, control R, over on this bar here, control R, left click, slide down an edge. And then let's um, also just come in here, control R, left click once, let's just slide in another edge. Just so these are tight. So now we go add modifier. Let's click search and type in sub, get a subdivision surface. And we also just wanna select this top face here and just go X and delete that face. So now we have something that looks like this. And if we tab back out, it's looking really good. So let's right click and go shade smooth. And now, we're gonna make a little clasp here at the bottom that holds it all together. And the nice thing here is, by the way, you can always go into edit mode and just select this bottom verts and adjust the height of this. It's really simple. So we're gonna go shift A, we're gonna add in a uh, plane. We're gonna go G, Z, bring it down to about here. And let's go to our modifiers, add and type in M-I-R-R, -R. click on mirror. 
Let's enable clipping and by default it's the X axis. So if we tab into edit mode and in our front view we go G and just move it over to the side, you're gonna see we have this and it's snapping together on the X, okay? So we're bringing it out to about here. Let's just go S, Y and flatten it a little bit. And then let's go to our edge select option and just select this edge over here. And then in our front view, it might be easier just to enable vertex select like so. Yeah, there we go, so we can see it. So in our front view, we're just gonna come bring it down a little bit like so, and then E to extrude. And we're gonna keep extruding, so E to extrude, and we're gonna come and kind of bend down a little bit, curving over like so, and then curving up, we're just extruding a few times like this. A very simple shape. And then we're gonna enable our proportional editing. Come to the drop down and go connected only. And if this edge still active here, we're gonna go S, Y, and flatten it while we roll our middle mouse button to control the fall off. And we're just gonna um, bring these guys together towards the end here like so. And then in a front view, you can always just adjust the shape a little by how you bring these together. I might just widen these ones here. There's a lot of different ways this can look if you look at references. Um, but something like this is a very kind of common shape for these sort of clasps. And then we're gonna come in here, I'm gonna go control R and roll the middle mouse button just once to add an extra segment. And now let's go to our modifiers, add modifier. Let's go search and type in sub, get a subdivision surface. And let's now grab with our face option. Let's just select this face over here. And let's just go E to extrude and Z and extrude it up. Let's go X and delete that face like so. And then let's just go to edge select, select this edge here and go G, X and move it in just to make something like this. And now we're gonna tab back out. Now let's go add modifier, search and get a solidify. Type in solid and click on it. Let's now come here and give this a little bit of thickness, like so. And let's just minimize all these. Let's go add modifier and search. Let's get a bevel. Type in bevel and let's just bring this amount way down. And let's just make the angle here something like 65. And now let's just right click and go shade smooth. And now if we go ahead, add modifier and go sub and get another subdivision surface, it's really gonna smooth this out. And you can come to a bevel here and increase the segments as well. That's just really gonna sharpen that up a little bit. So now this is looking really good. And you could easily come here and just scale it in object mode. Inside of edit mode, you could very easily um, just shape it by moving around some of these edges, like so. Um, and it's very forgiving. So once you've actually made the clasp, it's a very simple thing to kind of modify. But yeah, there it is, we've now made it. So believe it or not, we've now finished modeling. So let's now go and save. Then let's go into our front view. Shift A, let's add in a camera. Let's go to our right orthographic and move it back like so. And we're gonna go Shift A and let's quickly add in a empty. Let's make it a cube. Let's just select all of these ring uh, or earring objects here. And then holding and shift, make sure this cube empty here is active and go control P, object, keep transform. So now they're parented. So now we can grab the empty, press zero to go into camera view and then double tap R. And now you can actually adjust your earring here like so. You can always grab the camera and move back a little bit if you have to and adjust the camera, but now we can kind of move this here. And now let's go to our render properties. Let's go make it cycles. Let's just make the device GPU, if you have one. Otherwise you can just leave it at CPU. And then under the render here, we're gonna to go to the max samples and make it, let's go with 70. And now we can go shift A, add in an area light and move it up. And for now, we're gonna just go to our light settings and give it a strength of 500. And this is really increase the size like so. And then we're now going to actually grab our diamond. Let's go to our materials, click new, and let's just call it diamond. And let's just go grab our metal parts here. And let's grab maybe the shaft here and go new. Let's just call it gold. And um, let's just select all of these other objects and come to the drop down and just make sure that they have the gold as well. Anything that's not the diamond, like so. So now we can actually grab this earring with its little empty here. 
And in our camera view, we can go Shift D to duplicate it and then grab the new empty and then double tap R. And now you can kind of rotate this. And now we have two earrings. I think this kind of looks better in a way with two earrings in the rendered shot. So we're gonna go with something like that. Okay, I'm just gonna adjust them. So now if we go Z and we go rendered, we can see this is what we have. Let's go to our world um, properties and come to the color and make it black. And now it's a matter of grabbing our light and going Shift D, duplicating it. Let's have one coming off from the side. And let's go Shift D, have another one coming off from this side. And then Shift D, let's have one coming kind of from the front. Like, and then let's go Shift A, let's just quickly add in a plane, rotate it 90 degrees on the X and just move it back in the scene. And then go S to scale that guy way up and then S, X, and just widen it. So now we have a backdrop. And one more thing, just go Shift A and just add in a reflective plane, bring it all the way down and just go S to scale it up. And that's gonna bounce light back up, giving us a nice kind of reflection at the bottom of our jewelry. Now let's go in to, I guess we can just do this through our um, material property. So let's select the actual diamond. We've already given it a diamond material. And I'm actually gonna go ahead and make it a gem, even though it's technically a diamond, which would be clear. So let's just come here to the base color, make it kind of like a greenish blue. And let's go down to the transmission and make the weight one. And let's just bring down that roughness almost all the way down to zero. So now if we go Z, we go rendered, we've got this um, gem material. I might actually make it blue, see how that looks like. Or maybe let's try out with a bit of a, like an emerald kind of green. Yeah, I think that looks really good. So bring down the value a little bit and bring it here into the green range. Yeah, I really like the way that looks. And we could probably grab this light to the top and have it coming more from the back so we get a bit more rim lighting. I think that looks good. And now let's grab one of our um, ring components, the one that has the gold. Let's make it metallic. Let's bring down the roughness to something like 0.1. And let's take the base color and make it kind of like a gold brass kind of color like so. And you can bring the value up, I think a little bit. Might bring the roughness down even more to get some nice reflection. And now it's really just a matter of grabbing your lighting. So grabbing some of your lights and then just kind of duplicating them and looking at your reflections here. And you can always rotate the lights in real time as you're looking at render. And that's looking okay. But another thing you can do, and it's optional, you can go to your world um, properties. You can go to your color here and click on a tab. And then you can get an environment texture and you can use something like a HDRI, H HDRI. And there's a lot of free ones on the internet, but I just use like a basic studio one and then bring kind of like the strength down to a low value. That's always an option. Um, but yeah, we just want some of these not really nice kind of reflections. And I'm gonna grab the background plane here go new, just give it a material and then bring the base color value down. Just have a darker background. But yeah, that's about it. That's how you can make some nice looking jewelry. Make sure to kind of pose it a little bit. And then what we can do is we can go to our camera here, go to our camera settings and click on the depth of field, enable it and click on the eyedropper and then select maybe like one of the diamonds and then bring this f-stop down. And now we get some nice soft focus or maybe we'll grab the front one here, the one that's more to the front. Yeah, that's looking really good. Maybe bring up the f-stop a bit. And now let's go render and render our image. And here we have a little product render of some earrings. I really hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, definitely give it a like. I will be uploading this to my Patreon, the final blend file. So if you guys wanna check that out, all of that's in the description. And I'll see you guys next time for another tutorial.